Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating a floral themed save the date postcard that you can fit in any A7 sized envelope. So it measures five inches wide by seven inches tall. And then we're also going to include trim marks if you'd like to DIY all of this at home. I'll show you how to set up your file for your home printer so you can trim along the edges so you don't get any weird white areas. So when you trim your final document, um, I'll show you what that looks like. When you trim your final document, um, you're gonna be cutting right into the color. So your color and your graphics extend all the way to the edge, so it's super helpful. So this is the final design. This is what we're gonna be creating together. We are using the floral elements from my Watercolor Leaves and Florals kit, but I do offer a free mini kit if you'd like to experiment with those florals, or if you'd like to use your own, um, I'll show you how to do that. And I am also using my font, Miss Magnolia, for this text down here for the information. I created this vector um, lettering right here, the save the date, and I'm giving that away for free. So please go to the video description and you can get the link for everything that's mentioned in this tutorial, including the free watercolor floral mini kit and this vector graphic right here. So just be sure to hit that link. Okay, so we're gonna hop right in and get started. We're using three different colors right here. We've got a light blue for our background color, a medium blue for the save the date, and then a dark blue for our, our support text right here. So I'll give you those color builds. This is the light blue, this is the medium blue, and this is the dark blue. We're using a CMYK color mode for this entire tutorial since it cooperates with the majority of home printers. But if you are sending this off to get printed or if you have a more professional printer at home um, and RGB works better with that printer or if you are sending it off and the printer that you're using recommends an RGB file, just set your file up so it's RGB instead of CMYK. So just an, a heads up right there. So we're gonna create a new document, file new. We're in Illustrator, I'm in Creative Cloud, but really any version of Illustrator should work, CS3 or newer for this tutorial. So over here, just input five inches wide by seven inches high. And if you plan on having a background color or any graphics extend off the edge, you're going to need to add a bleed. So the standard bleed is an eighth of an inch, which is also 0.125 inches. So I've input that right here. And right down here is your color mode and I've got CMYK selected. And once you have all of that popped in, hit create. So let me grab the color from here and move it over. And once again, I have that free vector file right here for you as well. So link is in the video description for that. Okay, so we've got our blank documents. So the first thing we're gonna do is bring in those watercolor leaves and floral elements. So all I'm gonna do is file, place, and grab those. They're in my watercolor leaves and florals kit. It's under the floral bouquet number three and it is the blue green arrangement there's uh three colors for every single bouquet or arrangement in this kit so we're going to use the blue and green one for this one so hit place and it'll pop right in and it's going to be fairly large so i'm just going to scale this down just slightly right here i do like the graphics bleeding off the edge but i want to have everything together first before i scale it up so i'm just going to keep it at a workable size right now so what you saw right here is we have it actually Actually, it looks like a giant burst of a bunch of different combinations, but it's actually just this element repeated um, three more times. So it just goes all the way around. So it looks way more complicated than it is. So in order to do that, all you're gonna do is with it selected, you're gonna hit R on your keyboard for your rotate tool. And then you're going to choose a point of rotation. Right now you can see the crosshairs are right in the middle of this, but we want to rotate it further down here so we kind of rotate around a center. So I like doing it close to this one that's kind of hanging down right here. But when you do this, you wanna hold Alt and then you're just gonna click once and you're gonna get some options right here. When this pops up, you're gonna input 90 degrees right here and you're gonna hit copy. Do not hit okay, hit copy. And when you do that, you will get that repeat right there. And we're gonna do the exact same thing two more times, but instead of having to repeat that whole process, all you have to do is hit Command D or Control D on a PC twice and it will repeat that rotation. So this is exactly what we want it to look like. So you can group these together now if you'd like, or if you wanna nudge them closer together, you can do that too. So now we're just gonna find a nice place kind of in the center because we want the focal to be right in the middle of 
this design where we're gonna put our circle and all of our information. So now we can look at the scale. The scale is feeling pretty good. We can look at our example. We've got some leaves that hang off the edges down here and up here. Um, so really just go with whatever you feel most comfortable with. I kind of like how this one's feeling right now. So we're gonna go with it. And if you wanna change your mind later, of course you can do that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is set a background color. So I've got the background color being this kind of light blue. So I'm just gonna hit M on my keyboard for my rectangle tool. And you wanna make sure it extends all the way to the red line, that's your bleed line. Um, so just make sure when you draw this out that it goes all the way to that red line. And I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard, eyedropper the light blue, and then I'm gonna send it to the back by hitting Command, Shift, Open Bracket, and that'll send it all the way to the back. You can also right click on it and then arrange, send it back. Okay, so we're in good shape right now. And next we're gonna drop in our circle for all of our information. So I'm gonna come over here and grab my ellipse tool. And you just wanna find a point kind of in the center. We'll make sure everything is centered later on. But when you're ready, you're gonna hold Alt and Shift at the same time and then click and drag. And that will drag out a circle. So just size it up to whatever you feel is comfortable. Uh, mine's probably around three inches by three inches. And now if you look at our example, we've got this nice outline right around here. And in order to do that with your circle selected, you're just gonna hit Command C to copy or Control C if you're on a PC. And then you can just click anywhere and then hit Command F or Control F on a PC. And that will paste a copy of the circle right on top of the circle. So from here, we can just hold Alt and Shift and then just click and drag and that will scale it up right from the center. And then if you come over here, you can switch your fill with your stroke. And now we have our stroke. And my stroke is set at one point, um, which I like. So I'm just gonna keep that. Um, so you can see that right there. So we are all set right here. You can see with my example, I did reduce the opacity slightly. I kind of liked having a little bit of flowers poking through um, the white. So if you wanna do that, just select your circle and then come over here to your transparency settings. You can get to that by going window, transparency, and it'll pop open. And I set my opacity to 90%. So not a, a huge change, but enough where you can see the flowers kind of poking through, which I liked. Okay, so now we're just gonna grab our vector text. Super simple, just copy it, paste it in. It's already grouped together, so you don't have to worry about them uh, like grabbing one piece and not the other. So just scale it down, fit it in right there. I'm going to color this medium blue. And then we're gonna set our text and we'll center everything in just a minute. So now I'm just gonna type in my information. I'm using my font, Miss Magnolia. So I'm gonna type in all caps for Mike and Lizzie or whoever. Scale it as you see fit. I think I'm gonna keep mine around 16 points. And then I'm going to make sure it's centered right here. So if you come to your paragraph, you can center it. You can also hit it right up here in your toolbar. Um, this will make everything centering later a lot easier. I'm gonna copy this down, get rid of my caps lock, and just put the date, we'll say September. I like doing all lowercase for the bottom part, 2020, Atlanta, Georgia. And we'll reduce the size down to like uh, 11 points, maybe 13. I don't like doing 12 because it's a default number. It's just my own little thing. All right, so I'm gonna select both of these, eyedropper, the stark blue, and now we're all set. The only thing we have left to do is centering everything. We don't wanna center or grab our floral elements by mistake. So you can lock them temporarily in order to lock elements. Just hit Command-2 or Control-2 on a PC, and now I can't, whoops. Now I can't grab the floral elements. Um, so I'm gonna grab everything else since I locked, locked the floral elements. And then you're just going to click once on your background color because we want everything to be centered based on our background since that is the full size of our document. So with that select, you can see it got darker, the stroke. So with that selected, everything will snap to the center of this background since we defined the background as the point of centering. So right here, you're just going to click on this horizontal line center icon and you saw everything kind of nudged over a little bit and now we're all set. And in order to ungroup our floral elements, you're just gonna hit Command Alt 2 or Control Alt 2 and that will unlock them and you can see now I can move them if I want to. So 
you're all set from here. So the last thing you want to do is just save it for as a PDF so you can print it with your trim marks like you see right here. So I would recommend first saving your Illustrator file. That way if you ever want to come back or make any changes, you have the raw Illustrator file, the artwork you can move and manipulate however you need to. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so saving the Illustrator file and now we're going to save a PDF file. So file, save as. Um, down here with the format, choose Adobe PDF and hit save. And when you get this dialog box, just make sure you come over here to Marks and Bleed. I'm not applying any compression. This should just be your default so you don't um, reduce the quality of your image at all. And then click on Marks and Bleed and you just want to make sure you have trim marks checked right here. And you also want to make sure Use Document Bleed Settings is checked. If you don't check this, you're not going to have this extra little bit from the black line to the red line show up. Um, so when you're trimming your artwork, you could get those ugly white edges and you don't want that to happen. So make sure you check Use Document Bleed Settings and you can see they're kind of grayed out, but 0.125 inches is there like we defined at the very beginning. Um, so once you're all set with that, just hit Save PDF. That's all you need to do. And then when you open it up, you can see this is our exact artwork. We have the little, let me zoom in here so you can see, we've got this extra little space right here um, as safety area when you're trimming so you don't get those white marks. So just follow along your trim marks if you're DIYing this at home and you will be all set and good to go with your save the dates. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday and don't forget to head on over to my blog every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And make sure you hit the link in the video description. I've got the free save the date lettering um, as a vector. I've got a free watercolor floral mini kit for you and written instructions to this tutorial as well. So just make sure you click that link in the video description. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.